Denny Hamlin says he didn't do anything wrong on Sunday after his win at Pocono. First off, early in the race, he gets into Alex Bowman. Well, technically doesn't get into him. The air pushes Alex Bowman, spins him around. It's their third incident, I think, in the matter of a month, at least four or the last five races. So the 48 and the 11, they just can't get away from each other at this point. Denny Hamlin then goes on to put the five-car Kyle Larson into the wall on a restart. The same thing that he did to Ross Chastain in 2022, he does to Kyle Larson in 2023. He said that Kyle Larson does things like this all the time. Kind of a bit of a justification from Denny Hamlin here. But the question is, did was it dirty racing? Was it avoidable? Does Denny Hamlin race this way? And who's really at fault here? So if you take a look at the video here in a second, you can see that the 11 car definitely pushes on you know center of the corner to corner exit. He moves up the track more than the five car moves up the track or even comes down the track. I saw people, including Denny Hamlin, saying that the five car blew the corner. Absolutely did not. Without that contact from the 11 car, the five car makes it off the corner. And Denny said that he left the five car lane. True, but that contact that he made with the five and the direction of the five car because the 11 car pushing up left him really with no choice to go other than to bounce off the outside wall. Denny says that the five car of Kyle Larson could have lifted as well. And again, he's not wrong. He could have lifted, but at that point of the corner, lifting doesn't really solve anything because he's still likely going to hit the wall. Denny goes on to win the race. Kyle doesn't even come close to winning the race, actually falls out of the top 10. And then after the race, Kyle has some things to say, and Denny got booed uh, viciously by the crowd. I mean, that was Talladega 2007 when Jeff Gordon beat Dale Jr. He got booed so hard. Was that 2007? Doesn't matter. We'll fact check it later. Either way, got booed incredibly hard. People were throwing things from the overhead shot. You could see bottles coming down from the stands. People booed him. And listen, Denny Hamlin's going to get booed on a good day, even if he wins without wrecking what is arguably the most popular driver in NASCAR right now in Kyle Larson. So Denny already has that going against him, right? Denny's going to get booed because people think he complains all the time. He does complain a little bit. Uh, he also employs Bubba Wallace, which is a hot topic, controversial take for whatever reason. And then he wrecks the sport's seemingly most popular driver outside of Chase Elliott, and fans were not happy about that. They thought they were on their way to see a Kyle Larson win. Plus, it's in Pocono. Heavy sprint car territory out there. The posse showed up, weren't happy that one of their own got put into the wall, even though he's from California. So the question is, should the five car have lifted? No, Kyle Larson's going for a win, and you should expect the guy on the inside of you to not push off the track and uh, subsequently put you into the wall. Did Denny Hamlin do anything wrong? That's up to Denny Hamlin to decide, and I guess the other drivers to decide if that was dirty racing or not. It's hard racing. It's definitely hard racing. And if that's what people want to see, then so be it. But Denny Hamlin can't get out of the car afterwards and play victim. And Denny Hamlin loves to play victim. It's never Denny's fault. And like Kyle said after the race, Denny's always right. Even Denny's friends know he's right, is what Kyle said. Which is true, because Denny Hamlin's just that rich kid from high school that's got a bunch of hanger-on friends that hang around because they get to do fun things and never have to pay for anything, and they're just yes-men. They say yes and laugh at all the bad jokes and think that every idea he has is great, maybe supports a terrible music career because he wants to be a rapper at some point. That's Denny Hamlin, and that's all of Denny Hamlin's friends. They all are just like, well, Denny's rich, so we'll hang out with Denny and just do whatever Denny wants. Um which is, you know, really not the healthiest thing in the world to do. So Denny's never wrong. Denny's always the victim as well. And if you don't know about Denny Hamlin, you should. And he's going to go on his podcast on Monday. He's going to talk about s &T data. He's going to say Kyle Larson's done things like this before. He's going to word vomit for probably 30 minutes. And he's never going to actually say anything, take responsibility for what happened, own up to it, or just be like, yeah, dude, that's just how you have to race now. And if he did any of that, I would be like, all right, that's what it is. Just admit it. Just own up to who you are. Stop playing a little semantics game, hiding around and being like, well, you know, I didn't actually do this, but then you did that. So it kind of, no, if that's how you want to race, just say that's how you want to race. You've now done it back to back years on restarts to guys and put them both in the wall each time. And if the roles are reversed, if Denny Hamlin's the one that ends up in the wall right there, he's losing his mind right now. He's going to go on his podcast and talk about how dirty it was, how this is all that guys want to do when they race. Denny has no problem calling people out on his podcast for guys that he think race is bad, race is dirty, uh, has poor race crap. If he doesn't call himself out, I'm not really sure what we're doing here because that wasn't the cleanest thing in the world. Hard racing, sure. The five car, I don't think that you should have to lift if you're alongside a guy like that. Uh, and he was, 
Denny treated corner exit at Pocono like Max Verstappen treats corner exit on literally any racetrack when somebody's trying to race him side by side through the corner. Just continues to push out and act like that car on the outside is not even there. And that's certainly one way to race. I don't necessarily think it's the best way to race or a good way to race or anything, but that's up to Denny Hamlin to decide and the rest of the drivers in the garage area. Denny's now got two wins this year, same as Kyle Larson. Larson seemed like he was on his way to his third win. Obviously, late race restarts always jumble things up. But when it comes down to who's at fault here, I think the majority of it lies on Denny Hamlin. You can see from this camera shot that he just continues to push up the track and the five car doesn't ever really move. So it's really more on him than it is anyone else. And to say that he didn't make contact with the five, it wasn't heavy contact, but it's enough contact to, I think, push the car you know, out of the lane. And I don't think the five car blew the corner like Denny seems to think and some Denny supporters, Kyle Larson haters, uh, tend to agree with him. I don't think that's what happened here. I think this was just Denny Hamlin keeping his foot in the throttle and then just deciding, you know, I'm coming out of this corner with the lead whether we make contact or not. And again, if that's how he wants to race, that's how he wants to race. It's the Chase Briscoe approach to things, right? I don't like to race that way, but you continually kind of do the same shit over and over again. So Denny, in my opinion, definitely at fault here. And I know it's a bit of a rhetorical question asking because there's definitely more Kyle Larson fans and Denny Hamlin haters out there than there are Denny Hamlin fans. But you're going to see things like that continue to happen with race restarts like this. I think Michigan's probably the next place that you can see something like this definitely happen. They're headed to Richmond next weekend. Kyle Larson told MRN that he has receipts. And, you know, I don't think Kyle Larson's ever going to do anything about it. He's never going to uh, make Denny check those receipts. But it definitely isn't going to help out their uh, relationship on the racetrack. Uh, obviously, their buddy's off the racetrack, and Kyle said he's not going to let something like this affect that. But at the same time, like if somebody keeps racing the same way, maybe eventually you do have to do something about it. So I don't think we're going to see anything happen at Richmond. Do I think that the five will race the 11 differently from now on? I think that there's a really, really solid chance that does happen uh, going forward. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens with uh, the Denny Hamlin-Kyle Larson relationship. Either way, yeah, I don't agree with what he did. I don't like when drivers get out and play the victim when clearly they had at least some role in it. Um, and when you're the aggressor, you're on the inside, you push up into a car that's very much alongside you, it kind of falls on you. And to say that Kyle had a lane, knowing damn well that that lane doesn't actually exist. It's there, but it's not a usable um, lane. And to say that he could lift on basically corner exit at that point and not hit the wall is all a bit funny. Uh, to me. So, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Was Denny Hamlin at fault here? Was it Kyle Larson's fault? Just racing incident? Incident, as Charles Leclerc would say. Uh, so yeah, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard and also on Twitter, Instagram, and threads at BreakHardBlog.